The Breakfast Club is one of the leading hip-hop radio shows and podcasts that people watch for one-on-one rapper interviews, gossip, and news. The show is led by DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, and Charlemagne the God, who many people consider one of the biggest trolls on the internet. You have to wonder how someone has the balls to call themselves the God. We all know there's only one that can call himself this name, and it's definitely not Charlemagne. Unfortunately for him, there have been a lot of guests in the history of the show that weren't having any part of his BS. So here are 10 guests who seriously check Charlemagne on The Breakfast Club. Birdman. First up on the list is one of the most viewed and most infamous interviews that The Breakfast Club has ever had. Birdman. He not only called out Charlemagne for his behavior, but all three of the show's hosts. Yes, sir. I want to start this shit off straight telling all three of y'all stop playing with my name. When Charlemagne can't get to his target directly, he'll make other people talk about him just to fuse the situation. In his previous interviews with Trick Daddy and Rick Ross, Charlemagne asked them about Birdman and they talked about not liking his business tactics. So when Birdman stepped into the radio booth for his Breakfast Club interview, he started it off with a strong warning. Charlemagne decided that that was the best time to test his gangster and asked Birdman why he decided to be on the show if he was so angry at them. Tell him, tell him, get it off your chest, Birdman. Say it already. I'm, I ain't got to talk no more. Because I, I don't understand the angle. Like, what? Like, said it already. So why I come here? I did it already. I'm here. So what's happening? I mean, it's all good, but I'm, I'm saying, why, why, why? And I'm here. What's happening? I'm all good, but well, I'm saying, why say come that, here man. just Look, to I'm curse here. us what's up? What's happening, man? I wanted to see you. I wanted to talk to you on your man and your face. Absolutely. You understand me? I knew a p- few places you was at. I could have pulled up, but I don't think that was gangster. I wanted to come look you in your face like a man and tell you how I feel. Okay. You understand me? Straight up like a man. So no what's the shit, issue? No sugar. Ain't no issue. If it was an issue, you, you'll feel me. I just come to let y'all know, stop, put some respect on my name. You understand me? When y'all saying my name, put some respect on it. Did you, did you pull up on Ross that way or Trick Daddy? Man, I'm pulling up on you. Dude. It appears that he doesn't understand that not everybody goes behind the backs of others to talk about their issues. Birdman pulled up with his crew because he wanted to warn the Breakfast Club to stop playing with him. <laughs> Nicki Minaj. In 2012, Nicki Minaj released her Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded album which also coincided with the release of her perfume line. The album was making waves and becoming a household staple for lovers of Nicki. She got on The Breakfast Club to discuss the new album, and what should have been a marketing opportunity turned into a lecture. It turned out that Charlemagne and DJ Envy had not cued the songs from the album properly. <laughs> Shut up. It's The Breakfast Club. And what music with... are you playing? Oh, don't cut this off. This, see, this is the part I love. See, this is the, this is the part I love. Well, let's see what how much you, juice you got, you got, son. When we come back, we're going we to we gonna play high school. We, when we come back, we're not we... only going to play high school, though. Okay. Y'all only, y'all, that's what I don't like about y'all New York people. No. Y'all, there you y'all go. Y'all D-Rod stuff that only no. got a big name on it. This is what it's I love. There's great records on it, so let's go. They were playing the songs at random, which wasn't making Nicki Minaj happy, as there was a way the song should have been arranged, based on what people listen to the most. Y'all need to start trying to break records and start and start listening to Ooh. people's music. What? <laughs> what? I mean, that's the DJ. That's the DJ's job. What, 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 this is a continuation of what I was saying to Clue last night. And Clue, I know you ain't even up yet. You lazy. Bye. Mm. All right. When we come back, we're gonna get a Nicki Minaj record on. <laughs> she said so. That's why. And you I, ain't got the heart. I, I bet <laughs> you, you ain't gonna do it. I bet you I do. Do okay. what? What Nicki Minaj? What you wanna hear when we come back, Nicki? Why? Why y'all don't have the songs queued up though? Which what, what? We gotta play bills high, first. Okay, but I wanna hear high school. I wanna hear hell yeah. I wanna hear I'm legit. I want to hear um, Up in Flames. It. That's only Queens right but there. The, you don't even know these songs. You guys do not cl- clearly don't support me. Neither does Clue, but that's neither here nor there. But those are the songs that I would like mm. y'all to play. Nicki Minaj called out Charlemagne and DJ Envy, claiming they don't support her, which is why they didn't have her songs ready to go. Charlemagne tried to defend the situation by claiming they had the album, but it didn't change the fact that they hadn't cued the songs. DJ. I don't understand why I'm coming to radio and, and y'all don't even have my songs ready to be picked. Wait, 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 hold on. That's the DJ. Look at Envy when you say all that. Envy actually has the clean Roman reloaded re-up album. Thank you. He does have then it. let's start. Let's, we will. Let's go. We, we got to pay bills when we come back. Let's do it. Well, it's that's the, the main come. focus. And, I, and we have those records. Yes. That's the main focus of the kid coming to the radio. Nah. When, a, when the kid comes to the radio, nah. the kid comes to here. Kanye West. 
Next on this list is Kanye West, a man that has never been afraid to stand his ground. In a 2013 interview with The Breakfast Club, Kanye West was talking about his ideas to shape the music industry and some sort of racism that he had experienced. You know, when I wanted to get my deal, it was A&Rs that don't work there no more telling me how I needed to work with another rapper or how I wasn't a rapper and blah, blah. Now it's people that's at the corporations. They got the ability and the facilities that if I put my genius to it, that I can affect culture in a higher way the way I affected people when I made them Louis and I affected people when I made them Yeezy. So I ain't going at Nike as a corporation. I'm going at the people that's running the corporation. And I'm saying, I'm going to hit you in the chest until you listen to me. Because you feel like you ain't got to take no meeting with me. So I'm going to turn up and I'm going to let you, sh I'm going to show you what we are. We World War Z. We're going to run over that mountain until you listen to me. Because I'm influential. <laughs> the reason why I'm influential, same reason why you want me to come to your show or you want me to wear your product, is the same reason why you got to involve me and you got to cut me in. You know what I'm saying? People got fat without me. You cut me in because people be having negotiating while I was negotiating with Nike. They said, okay, cool, Kanye. You've been screaming up and down. We're going to give you a deal for Yeezy, finally. Because they was marginalizing me. Let me only design two shoes over a five-year period. People talking about the Red October. That's the design for three years ago. You know how many ideas I got? You know what I'm saying? So they try to marginalize me and then they say, look, we're going to give you $4 million a year to design this. I said, what about royalties? They said, look, you know, you're not a professional athlete, so you don't get no royalties. I said, look, man, I go, I go to any of these arenas and play one on nobody. I'm a performance athlete, and more than being an athlete, I'm a, I'm 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 Walt. I'm like Howard Hughes. I'm like David Stern. I'm like Steve Jobs. If anything, that's a compliment to them. I'm like Michelangelo, because I'm the new version of that. And anybody that backs me is gonna be the Medici family that backed Michelangelo at this point. You know what I'm saying? So when they told me I couldn't get no royalties, it's like, wait a second, you want me to work for Nike for two more years? I can't, what I tell my daughter in two years that I've been working trying to make Nike still hot and I still ain't, ain't, don't have, you know, the backing to really support and protect her because she in a position of a level of royalty like, like uh, the prince and the princes out in London, but they got more paper, they got heritage. Me and Kim, we on our grind. We had to do what we had to do to get to this point to be able to support our family, but we ain't there yet. We ain't financially there to the point to make sure that North is safe at all times. And that's the reason I'm... Kanye West was talking about a basic concept that any black person would understand, but Charlemagne seemed to need more explanation. Charlemagne went on to call out Ye by claiming he saw him as a revolutionary, but all Kanye talked about now was money. Obviously, Kanye's major point, which was systemic racism, flew over Charlemagne's head. But of course, Kanye had an answer for the radio host's claim of being a sellout. Like Steve. Why do you talk yeah. so much about money nowadays, man? I used to look at you as like yeah. a real revolutionary. You know real revolutionaries didn't need money to change the world? Malcolm X wasn't rich. Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't rich. Like, I don't understand why everything is so much about money and, and stuff to you now. Because you need product. You need to own something to have a voice at this point, because I'm telling you. You already got a, You don't need to own something to have a voice. Yeah, you had a voice. When you got on stage and you said George Bush don't care about black people, you was using your voice. You don't need money I to have you, a voice. I could use my voice, but what happened if y'all don't buy no other albums? Then that, that voice, people gonna say, oh, he like Arsenio Hall, and he was turning up too much, and now you fired. But when you got money, can't nobody fire you. No. Kanye was not far from the truth, because without money, there are some spaces you can't enter. Since that interview aired in 2013, Kanye has gone on to own and run a billion dollar company. Soldier Boy. During a Breakfast Club episode in 2022, Charlemagne decided to ruffle Soldier Boy's feathers by claiming the rapper wasn't born in Atlanta, but on the internet. Dude, I think of the internet. I'm dead serious. Bow Wow's the one that's from Atlanta. Was... In my mind, Soldier Boy was born online. No. That's in well. My mind. Don't get him started again because he definitely... Charlemagne's remark only meant one thing, which was Soldier Boy didn't have a life nor career outside the internet. It wasn't really a dig at Soldier Boy's childhood, but at his life. Soldier Boy was obviously not having it, so he went off on Charlemagne via Instagram Live. The man, because I'm trending every day. Let me trend in peace. Know what I'm saying? Let me have my fun. Let me go viral in peace. Stop speaking. Don't, don't talk about where I'm from, bro. You don't know nothing about me, bro. Was you there when I was growing up? Did you grow up with me? No. Stop getting me mad, bro. Leave me. Stop getting me out my character, bro. Stop getting me out my element, bro. Let me make my music and do my dances and do that. I ain't know nothing with nothing about it. No, with nobody. But when you get to speaking on my name, I'm going to address it every time. Stop capping. I get mad because y'all be capping. You want me to come up to the breakfast club? Cool. I'll be there. 
You know it's our love. It's love. I love Charlemagne. Don't get it twisted. It ain't no smoke. It ain't nothing like that. I love Charlemagne. I love Angelie. I love DJ Envy. Envy, I salute you, Envy, because you the one who said Salty Boy need to be on the Mount Rushmore. Y'all know what I did for hip hop. I don't know why they play on my name. I got more money than all of them. Although Soldier Boy claimed to have love for Charlemagne and the rest of the Breakfast Club crew, it didn't stop him from expressing his anger. Charlemagne hasn't gotten wiser after that incident and still tried to trigger Soldier Boy again by claiming Drake was the world's biggest rapper. But he ain't had no big comeback. And look how, and look how he yo, crossed, look how he crossed yo, over. Yo, Meek Mill ain't beef with Chris Brown and was finna box with Floyd Mayweather. He, he would be with, with Drake, the biggest rapper in the world. <laughs> Drake? <laughs> Drake? Yo, stop playing with me. From where? The grassy. Stop playing me like I ain't teach Drake everything he knows. Come on, you taught Drake everything he knows. Y'all didn't hear Drake on with his first song. Tell me what's really going on. Drizzy Drake back in this thing already. What's that? That's oh, Soldier. Don't do that. My blown. Wow. Don't oh. do that. Soldier Boy may be reaching by claiming he made Drake, but Charlemagne definitely knew what he was up to when he brought up the conversation. Beanie Siegel. Next up is Beanie Siegel, who instilled fear in Charlemagne and also showed us a petty side of the radio host. Beanie Siegel had beef with the game around 2017, and it got worse after they worked together on a track with Meek Mill. Beans addressed the beef on a podcast, and Charlemagne thought it was an opportunity for him to poke at the rapper. Beanie Siegel then decided to remind Charlemagne of the time he made Lil Mama cry with his questionable interview methods. Because people look at you like, I don't know if I can trust me. How? How you can't trust me? Because it seems like you just flip. How you can't trust me? I'm a man about my Like, it's hard to trust somebody. Like I said, you, you know, I know I keep going back to this, but it's true. He was in the studio with me eight days prior. Did we, did we did not just answer that? But you knew he wasn't real. You said he wasn't. You didn't think he was real when you was in the studio with him. All right, put it like this. Is Kanye a street? Absolutely not. Huh? Absolutely. But when Kanye put that phone call in, you know the stories. Who was there? And he ain't a street... But he part of he part of that thing of ours. Mm -hmm. So I took penitentiary chances. I could have got booked out this month. He put the call in, I was dead. Strapped tooth to nail. Ready to bust ass about the Cause he a part of our family. You understand what I'm saying? Now for no, people that don't know. Don't, you don't how you don't situation. understand? Because you know why? Because you not from that cloth. Mama, that's cool. I don't get it. You though. not. That's why you don't understand that. Kanye not a street. I know that. If you, that's like the There's average dude. saying somebody's not a street. It's saying somebody's not real and a sucker. That's the difference. There's a difference between being street and real. Kanye's when real. When you portray Kanye's yourself, real, who he is. when you portray yourself to be a certain way, and that's not what you is. In music, that wouldn't have came out unless the conversations didn't have transpired. The world ain't know that. Well, it's. You know, it was holes being poked through your reputation mm -hmm. at the time. But what I'm saying, it, it didn't matter. I'm a rock for you regardless. But when you portray yourself in a certain light, like you won't go all the way right there and you don't, I got to draw back. So understand that. Like, it don't matter if a person, well, he could be a square. But that's my man. That square, that's my man. And we play video games because that's what he do. And I want to yeah. come in. I chill with him. If he got a problem, he a tone cold, stone cold square. This ain't your fill, young. I got that. That's what men do. Man. I'm just the type of I don't like somebody. I don't pretend. Like, that's just bullshit. You, you, Cause you a character. That's <laughs> why. It's the truth, though. You a character. Life's too, time too. Life's too short to be wasting your time with suckers or people you think is suckers. You a, so why I'm here, then? Cause then, I then, think you're a sucker. So I should be out, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, that's me personally. I wouldn't sit in and have a conversation with a sucker. Yeah, you'll sit here and you'll bash a, a little girl, a little mama until she cry. That's what you do. Coward. Well, nigga. We talk, me and you talking to each other now. I tell you yeah. that I think, I think you're a hypocrite. You could think what you want. And I think you'd be coming off as, as a hater sometimes. Mm. You could think what you want, Fanny. So now, what, what's, what's next? With, with I could say, say, I think you're a bitch. You let Fred Joe Star and them check you, but you made that little girl cry. They make her cry. But yes, you did. Good. That's your dad. Lil Mama. Since Beans brought it up in the last segment, let's get into what Charlemagne did to this young female rapper. He started off by complimenting her confidence, then goes on to tell her that she comes off cocky for somebody that hasn't achieved a lot in the music industry. 
Charlemagne seemed to be on an ego trip with how he was happily listing everything he had achieved. From a 33-year-old man at the time to a 22-year-old girl that seemed like bragging. Charlemagne then went on to make a silly comparison between Lil Mama and Nicki Minaj. As if that wasn't enough, he went on to say Lil Mama needs to release more music and stop thriving on old glory. He also brought up the time Lil Mama crashed Jay-Z and Alicia Keys moment on the stage and said that's all she's known for. It seemed like Charlemagne wanted to humble Lil Mama throughout the entire interview because he didn't even let her shine when talking about her record with Snoop Dogg. Lil Mama then broke down when she was badgered with questions about releasing a new album. She released her first album when her mother was dying of cancer. And now people like Charlemagne just want to piss on her parade and make her feel like she's not trying hard enough. Charlemagne thought he had gotten through to Lil Mama because of her breakdown, but she reminded him that his advice is irrelevant. If he's not showing up to support young black artists, Charlemagne seems to be having too much fun talking down on people who accept to be on his platform and he forgets that they're human. Lil Mama may not have been getting buzz in positive ways, but at least she stood her ground and was proud of who she is and where she came from. Dame Dash Dame Dash's 2015 Breakfast Club interview was treated as a TED Talk by some viewers, but for Charlemagne, it was yet another opportunity to bring a successful person down. Dame Dash was talking about the importance of investing and how working under somebody isn't always ideal, and Charlemagne and DJ Envy seemed to take offense to that. Why are you offending? I'm not offending. I don't know. I, I, I Why waste the, the snapping? Thing. No, wait, wait, wait. no, no, no. It's, it's about we have no, we have a different taste level. I, we have different. You different like opinions. a boss? I don't. It's not a matter about having a boss. You yes, it is. In my matter, it is. It doesn't matter to you. In me, it does. Because I have enough investment. I don't. I don't investment. You don't own nothing. You don't own nothing. Investment. You sound smart to somebody dumb. You know what I'm saying? You got a boss. You sound. You have a boss. What are y'all arguing about? Give me a favor though. In the mix of this conversation, don't tell me I sound stupid because now. The interview takes an even bigger turn as Dame continues to lay into the entire team for their positions of employment with heavy shots fired. The entire Breakfast Club crew tries to defend themselves. It seems like Dame is just being a dick at this point, but at the end of the day, most of the guests that come on the show are subjected to the same disrespect. According to Charlemagne, some of the staff said Dame Dash shouldn't be on the show because he's hard to work with. And then when Dame asked to drop their names, he wouldn't say anything. How do you feel, let me ask you a question. How do you feel about the fact God that you're so gossip for them? <laughs> Like you sell gossip, you a man. How do men sell gossip? Sell That's for gossip. women. Yeah. Yeah. You don't talk about, though, Andrew, I don't talk about really what more. other people say. Every day, y'all talking about what you heard. A, that's if, gossip. If, if that's all you yeah, that's women show, do that, man. That's what women it. do. I don't listen to your show. Well, I don't want well, to hear about gossip. Your you I be sleep. I'm a boss. I wake up when about. I want. I don't be up that early. I mean, I think I think there's a variety. I come home that late. There's a variety of things that we talk about on the show. A man that gossips to me don't have nuts. But that that means he has a vagina. It's not gossip though, because I'm telling you what they said. Tell me who said it. That's don't, not irrelevant. Nah, then you, then you see where I'm from, you don't do that. If you want to deliver but a message, nah, I don't want to got... hear that. It's, it's you lying. <laughs> you lying. Call out a name or you lying. <laughs> call out a name. Be a man and call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. Right, I'm gossiping and I'm so, chatty, right, chatty, chatty, chatty. I'm chatty patty. I'm chatty patty. No chatty patty gossiping. questions for me, man. <laughs> Ask me a real question. Tell man. About don't tell me with somebody. 6 9 Next up is 6 9 Even though it wasn't exactly a check, but more of a clarification. When 6ix9ine was 18, he was involved in a scandal involving a 14-year-old girl. Charlemagne, of all people, brought it up on 6ix9ine's interview with The Breakfast Club three years after the incident. He asked if 6ix9ine was a registered sex offender, knowing fully well that he wasn't. Are you a registered sex offender? Nah, I'm not. Um, Were you convicted of sex I'm usually, Nah, I'm not. You could actually look it up. You got a computer right there. Yeah, I did. I, 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 that's why. That's why I asked. Cause I mean, you, can't be, you can't believe nothing you see on the internet. That's we why I'm said, we got, you. So we got, somebody sent a letter up here actually mm -hmm. about you, right? With yeah. charges against you, and I guess it was something with you were 18 years old. Yeah. And the now girl, look at this, right? You, yo, right? Uh, if, if 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 I came, all right. So so look at it like this. How old are you? Like 40. Almost. Almost 40. 40. Yeah. Look at it like this, right? <laughs> say 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 two two years ago, three years ago, right? Say three years ago. I'm 21 now. Mm -hmm. Say three years ago, right? I, I come out, I, like, you know what I'm saying? I had an underage girl in the video, right? Um, and, you know, it happens, you know what I'm saying? You know, girls lie about ages. Everyone knows this, right? She was 14. A lot of people get caught up in this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
now I, I i come out with this I, I i get in trouble for this firm right I, i'm totally remorseful for the situation and it happened right charlemagne knew what he was doing by poking takashi like that he knew people were on Takashi's neck for that issue, and he was playing into it. It was evident that he wanted to frustrate 6ix9ine into hearing a story that was non-existent, but the entertainer didn't fall into the trap. Now, say, no, no. Yeah, tell him what happened. I'm, I'm going to say, but say he comes out, right, with the same charge, right, at the age of him. Right? Into the mic. Right, at, mm-hmm. the, at, at the age he's at right now. This is how nasty the media is. This is how nasty this how nasty the media tries to paint a picture and and violate. This is what the this the, the system does to, to youth, right? This is what the system does. Now I'm a, I'm 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 an 18 year old kid, right? With my life in front of me. Of course, like if I didn't rap and I didn't, none of this shit would have mattered. But now that I do rap and I'm actually like somebody, when these charges come up, it's like, oh my god, he's a monster. You know what I'm saying? But paint it to where the people don't see, like, yo, the kid, the kid is a kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, he got caught up in. Some... When people comment under my shit, pedophile and all that, you know what I'm saying? I I'm so numb to it. Right? Because I know what I am and I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Now, say if if I won't understand if I was his age, you know what I'm saying? And I, I caught that charge and and it would look it would look disturbing. Like, you know what I'm saying? It would be like, what the fuck? But I think the media don't see it like, yo, this kid is it got caught up in some, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like bringing other artists' business to the show. You know what I'm saying To relate to myself But how many people Out there get caught In some shit Where a girl lie About her age There was no sexual Intercourse between me And the and female At all It was just I got arrested For being in the situation Did you plead guilty You plead guilty right I plead guilty Like this quick blood Why I was scared blood I didn't have no money I was poor Like this was three I wasn't Rapping like I was I wasn't I wasn't on some like Hot it was like, yo, you know, this girl was missing and 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 she's this age and she's in foster care and 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 her family's trying to find her. When I'm hearing this, my heart is sinking to my stomach and I'm like, my, my girl's pregnant at the time. And I'm like, and they was like talking 15 years, they was talking mad. Blood, I didn't have no money for a, 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 an attorney. I didn't have nothing. I was scared, blood. I was like... I was like, yo, I'm taking the trial. I'm fighting it. They said, yo, if you blow trials, it's... 15 years. So no, more, was, blood. Like, she, was I was like in a, she was dancing on video or something? Yeah, she, it was just like, yo, I don't know if you ever saw a video of me back in the day when I when like I pedigreed this girl. Like, you never seen that? Like, I did this wrestling move on this girl. Mm-hmm. Nelly. Some people blow up on Charlemagne like Birdman, and others have a subtle approach. Nelly is one of the guests who calmly put Charlemagne in his place. So much so, anyone could have missed it. During the interview, Nelly was asked about his love life and he didn't really want to go into details. Then Envy brought up a line in one of Nelly's songs and asked if it was referring to an altercation with Irv Gotti. Of course, Charlemagne throws in a weird little comment. (laughs) Now, and here I come, the the record with Rick Ross you did a while ago. There was a line on there that it seemed like at the time, I guess you and Irv Gotti were going through a little problems. Was that line going at Irv? And your man is a, your ex man is a chump. And I tell him, da, 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 da. I'm not a rapper, so I don't know. That's what happened. That was a good rap. No, you know, I ain't, I ain't never had no problem with Irv, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Irv ain't never saw me and said nothing out the ordinary or side of the neck or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? We always say what's up and keep it moving. Never no pound and then a whisper in the air, you got a good girl. Yeah. Nah, I don't think he said that, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know, chat. You know, if, if it's something you're trying to get to, just get to it. You know, it's like I said, we retainers, bro. Just say what you mean, mean what you say. No, I don't want to, I don't, okay. I don't know. I was just on World Star last week. I got Getting, you. Yeah, I don't want no problem. I, what Nelly likely meant by the retainers line was that he had thugs and lawyers ready to defend him if anything ever went down. It was more like a quick warning to Charlemagne that if he keeps trying to sneakily get words out of his mouth, Nelly's ready to slide on someone with no issues. After that remark, 
Charlemagne stayed humble to the end of the interview. And just like that, we have finished our list of interviews on The Breakfast Club, where guests have stood their ground and checked Charlemagne for his antics. Beyond the drama and confrontations, the show continues to be a platform many people turn to for candid interviews and news in the world of rap and hip hop. And the show's success is undeniable. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you are hungry for more, check out these other videos popping up on the screen right now. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when we drop new content. Thanks for watching, y'all, and we will see you in the next one.